Albert Michelson was the first person to get an accurate value for the speed of light. In the late 19th century, Michelson did an experiment involving two mountains, one telescope or eyepiece, a source of light, and a series of mirrors. This is a top-down view of Michelson's apparatus. This structure here had eight mirrors on it and could be made to spin. There was a curved mirror some 22 miles away on Mount San Antonio and then there was a plane mirror right here. And what happened was the source of light would be made to hit this mirror and hit that curved mirror, hit the plane mirror, hit the curved mirror again, come back here and then could be viewed by a person looking through the telescope. Well then this was made to rotate and it turns out that there are only certain rotational rates that would allow the light source to be seen through the telescope. If this isn't rotating at the proper rate then you wouldn't see the light through this telescope because the light wouldn't hit these mirrors exactly as we've shown in this picture. The light would be scattered someplace off to the right or off to the left or something like that. So based on the rate of rotation of this series of mirrors and the distance, Michelson was able to determine the value for the speed of light and I think he got within 98 or 99 percent of our current accepted value which is right here 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. The equation for relating the speed of light with the frequency and the wavelength of light is given here c is equal to f times lambda where c is in meters per second f the frequency is in hertz and lambda the wavelength is in meters. Let's do an example problem. Find the wavelength of a B104 radio wave which is FM 104.1 which has a frequency of 104.1 megahertz. So we're going to use this light speed equation which is good for all types of light visible waves, x-rays, ultraviolet, and radio waves. Now these are the radio waves which are carrying information from the radio station through the atmosphere and to your car radio. These are not the sound waves that are coming out of your car radio and that are interacting with your ears, just to be clear. So we're looking for the wavelength, so we're going to solve that equation for wavelength. A radio wave is a light wave, therefore it travels at a known speed 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second and the frequency is 104.1 megahertz. Now although it isn't in proper scientific notation this term in the denominator is very easily written by taking the SI prefix mega throwing it out and in its place putting the power of 10 that mega means which is 10 to the sixth. So 104.1 megahertz is 104.1 times 10 to the sixth hertz. Now some students look at that and they get upset because it's not in proper scientific notation but that doesn't matter. Your calculator can deal with that just fine. So make it easy on yourself. Take the SI prefix out and put the power of 10 in and tap away on your calculator and you're ready to go. We're going to round this to three significant figures. 2.88 meters is the wavelength of this FM radio wave. Suppose we have an AM radio wave. Well, AM radio waves are not in megahertz but are in kilohertz. So this problem is essentially like the other except Notice that instead of substituting 10 to the 6th, as we did in the top example, we're substituting 10 to the 3rd. We're taking the SI prefix kilo out 
and in its place, group, putting what it means, 10 to the third. And we can see that AM radio waves have a much longer wavelength than FM. Although several attempts were made throughout history to determine the speed of light, including by Galileo and by the Dane Ole Raymer, the first pretty good value for the speed of light was determined by Albert Michelson in 1879. All light, radio waves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-rays, and so on, travels at a known speed in the vacuum of space. The speed of light has the symbol C and is the product of a light wave's frequency and wavelength.